Hey there, anime lovers. Welcome to another exciting video on our channel. Today, we're delving into the world of My Hero Academia and exploring the what-if scenario of Deku having a copy quirk. Can you imagine the possibilities? In this part one of our series, we'll take you through the journey of Deku's quirk discovery and his entrance exam. So, fasten your seatbelts and let's dive right in. Chapter 1 Midoriya Izuku was a nice boy, his parents adored him and his preschool teachers praised his kindness and willingness to share. The little green-haired boy was a delight to be around, but he was also quite a mystery. By age four, when most children begin to manifest their quirks, Izuku hadn't shown any sign of change so his mother took him to the doctor. Doctor's office. Hmm, I don't understand it. The doctor mumbled as he looked over the results of Izuku's tests. Midoriya Inko, Izuku's mother, looked unworriedly before speaking up. Doctor, is there something wrong? Inko questioned as she held onto her little boy. Not wrong, per se. The doctor replied. But I've never quite seen anything like this before. What do you mean? Inko asked starting to worry more for her son. According to all of the tests, Izuku not only has a quirk but it should be ridiculously powerful and obvious. The strength of his quirk factor alone is astounding. I've never seen marks this high before. Little Izuku has more quirk potential than several dozen full-grown adults, it's mind-boggling. The doctor informed the mother and son as he continued to look over the test results. So he does have a quirk? Inko wanted to be sure. Most assuredly, Midoriya-san, every test has come back positive. The doctor confirmed. The only thing I can tell you for sure about it is that it's a mutant-type quirk. Beyond that it, in all honesty, should already be incredibly obvious. The fact that it's not is truly baffling. What should we do? Inko inquired and the doctor could only give her the basics. Keep watch on Izuku, check for any physical changes, or sudden mental developments. Both regeneration and mental enhancing quirks can fall under the mutant type, the doctor advised and the mother nodded in understanding before bowing and leaving with her son. Izuku would go on to show no significant changes through the next few years. He was intelligent, to say the least always within the top 10 or even the top 5 of his classes. Unfortunately for the young green-haired boy, none of his peers believed him when he told them he had a quirk. Without anything to show them the other kids wouldn't believe that Izuku had a quirk at all. It was his friend Kakin that had started the exclusion of Izuku from his peers. The young ash blonde boy had found out about the term quirkless and applied it to the young boy. Without anything to show them to prove them wrong Izuku quickly found himself an outsider among his classmates. You ready to head out Izuku? Inko asked her son as the 11-year-old finished tying his shoes. The two were headed out for some shopping together and Inko planned to buy Izuku some All Might merchandise that would hopefully put a smile on her son's face. To the worried mother her son didn't smile enough, she knew that he had no real friends because his quirk was still a complete mystery. She suspected that he was even seen as quirkless by the other kids his age, but until his quirk actually did something that could be catalogued as an ability there wasn't much either of them could do. She'd held out hope that they had discovered his quirk a couple of years ago. Izuku was always a smart boy but when he first saw her quirk in action he'd quickly understood it. The few times he'd seen his father, Hisashi, use his fire breath quirk the little boy had quickly figured out how it worked and that his father had hit the limit of his quirk's ability, just as Inko had when she was a teenager. Unfortunately a trip to the doctor's office had rendered the idea of an intelligence-enhancing quirk out. Izuku simply didn't have the marks of that type of quirk on his test results. I'm ready. Izuku smiled slightly at his mother and the two left their apartment. Hisashi was at work, even on a Saturday he sometimes had to go into work, the man was hopeful that his importance to the company meant that he'd be getting a rumored promotion that had been going around his office recently. The mother and son made their way towards the market and began to shop for groceries. Everything was normal on this Saturday, the sun was out and it was pleasantly warm. A few white clouds drifted lazily across the sky and people were in a good mood. Walking back home Inko smiled as Izuku happily looked over the new All Might figure they'd stopped at a shop to buy. It happened so quickly. A sudden scream, a large crash, people running. Inko lost sight of Izuku for a moment. Get out of my way! A loud voice yelled followed by the one sound a mother never wanted to hear. The sound of her child screaming in pain. Monster! A different voice roared out followed by another crash. 
when the crowd had cleared out a bit Inko saw pro hero, Shishido if she remembered hearing from Izuku correctly, repeatedly punching a man with long sickle-like blades coming from his arms. The villain was pinned and looked to already be unconscious but the pro seemed almost feral in his rage. Izuku? Inko questioned looking for her little boy. Her blood ran cold upon seeing her baby laid out on the ground, red blood pooling under him. Izuku, she ran to her child's side and her scream seemed to snap the lion hero from his rage. He quickly cuffed the villain and ran over to assist. Izuku was unconscious and Inko was panicking as she saw the large cut across her son's torso. Damn. Shishido grimaced as he grabbed the hem of his costume and used his strength to tear it off. He was quick to fold the cloth and place it over the large laceration on the boy. Ma'am hold this, keep the pressure on the injury to help stop the bleeding. The pro instructed and Inko wasted no time in following the instructions. I've got a code 47C at Shishido started speaking into a police radio but Inko had already tuned the pro out her complete focus on her injured son while tears poured from her eyes. The next hour was a complete blur to Inko, she barely remembered anything other than calling Hisashi and trying to tell him what happened. Hisashi had practically torn the hospital doors off their hinges when he arrived. Now both parents were sitting in a waiting room holding each other. Both had red eyes from their tears when a doctor approached them. Midoriya san? She asked and both parents nodded. Izuku is stable and he'll make a full recovery. She gave them a soft smile as she watched the tension and fear practically fall off the parents' shoulders. Can we see him? Inko and Asashi asked in unison. Of course, please follow me. The doctor replied as she led them to Izuku's recovery room. Hisashi and Inko saw Izuku sleeping in a hospital bed and were at his side so quickly the doctor almost thought they had speed quirks for a second. Overall Izuku seemed fine, gauze bandages were wrapped around his chest and there was an four in his arm but other than those two things the boy just appeared to be sleeping, will there be any lasting side effects? Hisashi asked seeing his son sleeping peacefully, aside from a thin scar, no. The doctor shook her head. The villain's quirk was deadly, but it also cut incredibly cleanly. It was very easy to mend and Izuku responded well to one of our nurse's healing quirk. He didn't even need stitches, thank goodness. Inko sniffled as she held her son's hand as he slept. The two parents stayed with their son the whole night and in the morning both were awoken to the sound of their son's voice. It was a joyous set of parents that, gently, hugged their son that morning and Izuku had to be filled in on what had occurred. The young boy had only the brief memory of the villain heading his way and a flash of pain. Midoriya Cohen, are you hungry? A nurse asked as she held a tray of food in her hands. Seeing the boy nod the nurse smiled at the cute boy and placed his food on the movable table and let the boy start his breakfast. Inko and Asashi asked where the cafeteria was and Asashi left to get breakfast for Inko and himself. Izuku seemed rather hungry and was done with his breakfast several minutes before Asashi came back. In that time though Inko noticed her son develop his thinking face that he did when he was analyzing a quirk. The strangest part about seeing him do it now, other than the fact that she was the only one in the room and he'd already studied her quirk completely, was that her son was looking at his own hand while slowly clenching and opening his hand. Izuku, are you okay? Inko asked and Izuku turned to her with an indecipherable look before he spoke. I think I have a quirk. Izuku confusedly replied as he put the tip of his index finger behind the tip of his thumb and then flicked at an empty plastic cup that had once had juice in it. The cup, several inches away from his fingers, flipped over and landed on the sheets of his bed. Inko stared wide-eyed at what her son had just done before smiling widely and hugging her son gently. Oh Izuku! I knew you'd figure it out eventually. Inko congratulated her son on finally figuring out his quirk. It seemed it may even be an offshoot of hers. What did I miss? Hisashi came into the room with his and Inko's food to see his wife smiling happily while Izuku looked confused while staring at his hands. The following explanation and demonstration brought a smile to the father's face. The only oddity was that Izuku still seemed to be confused by his new quirk. To both parents it seemed their son wasn't able to truly figure out his new ability. The rest of the day was spent bringing in the hospital's resident quirk specialist to help the family figure out Izuku's ability and get it registered. The specialist however wanted to look into the family history to see potential links between Izuku's quirk and his parents and grandparents. The only close resemblance seemed to be Inko's attraction of small objects quirk, but in reverse. 
Izuku however, was the one that shot that theory down, that's not it. Izuku spoke up in his parents as well as the specialist turned to him curiously. This quirk is an emitter type, my quirk is a mutant type. This led to the specialist running the quirk typing test on the boy and confirming that Izuku did indeed have a mutant type quirk, but that his results now showed he also had the emitter trait on his test. I've never seen this before. The specialist commented as he looked over the original test that had been done on Izuku, showing the boy to only have the mutant trait. He then turned his gaze to the new test showing both the mutant and emitter traits. How in the world? The family stayed at the hospital for another two days. In that time Izuku was given a full body scan and high focus scans of his skin from head to toe. While these were taking place the cork specialist had called in other specialists and they'd set about checking the national cork registry for any corks that matched what Izuku had displayed so far. At the end of the second day the Midoriya family, nay the entire country, potentially the world, would be shocked beyond belief. It's force projection. The original specialist reported and all three Midoriyas blinked at the man. It's a quirk registered to a young pro MMA fighter. He's rather popular and goes to blood drives to help increase turnout and donations. Izuku has somehow obtained his quirk, or a copy of it at least. But, but how? Inko questioned while Asashi looked on in confused concern for his son. I believe that the blood that Izuku was given during his transfusion was from the young man. A different specialist spoke up, she was one of the ones called in by the original. As crazy as it sounds, Izuku's mutant quirk is the ability to copy quirks from the blood of others. Huh? Hisashi couldn't hold back his exclamation of confused shock. I know. It's fascinating. A third specialist smiled though he quickly toned himself down seeing the looks he got from the parents and his own colleagues. Sorry, but this is truly unprecedented. A quirk capable of permanently copying other quirks has never been seen before. So I have to have blood transfusions to gain a copy of a quirk? Izuku asked his head tilted slightly and his eyes looking between the three specialists. Not quite, young man. The initial specialist informed him as he pulled a few pictures from the file as was holding. These are images of your hands, Izuku, magnified about 100 times. The Midoriya family looked at the pictures and the specialist pointed to tiny spots all over Izuku's palms. These are about as thick as a human hair. Compiling these images with the internal images we got from the full body scan shows that these spots are microtubes that connect to Izuku's bloodstream. We believe his mutant quirk utilizes these micro spots to potentially extract blood from a person and use that to copy their quirk. Both parents nodded to the explanation but still appeared rather lost. Izuku stared at his hands for a bit before the third specialist spoke up again. If you're up for it, young man, we could do one last test before you leave. He offered and Izuku nodded in acceptance, after looking to his parents for permission, the test was moved to a room with a micro-imager and three of the hospital staff were brought in, a female nurse, a male nurse, and the doctor that had performed Izuku's treatment, so what do I do? Izuku asked as he looked at the people in the room, each of these staff has a different type of quirk, Izuku. We'd like you to hold onto their arm and try to actively copy their quirks. This is to see if you can copy every quirk type or only emitter quirks, the female specialist explained and Izuku nodded. The female nurse stepped up first with a smile. Hello Izuku, I'm glad to see you doing so much better. She smiled getting one in return from the boy. My quirk is an emitter type called Healing Aura you responded well to it when we were closing up your injury, thank you for that. Izuku said with a bow. And for this too. The nurse smiled and waved off his thanks before holding out her arm for him. Izuku placed his hand on the offered arm and focused on copying her quirk. Izuku didn't feel anything and neither did the nurse. Move over to the imager please. The first specialist instructed the nurse and she placed her arm under the device's lens. A minute later and the specialist nodded. It seems to have worked. The imager shows multiple micro punctures that have almost instantly healed up. Is this it? Izuku asked as he held up his hands and a light green glow emitted from them. The nurse smiled at the boy and nodded. That's healing aura all right. I hope you'll put it to good use Izuku. The nurse smiled kindly and Izuku nodded rapidly as the glow dissipated from his hands. Well, this confirms he's not limited to just one of each type. He now has two emitter type quirks. The third specialist nodded as he marked the result on his tablet. Guess I'll go next. 
The male nurse grinned as he briefly showed his quirk to Izuku by growing to double his original size. My quirk is a transformation type that I call Little Giant, he chuckled and Izuku laughed at the name too. The man offered his arm to Izuku and once again Izuku held onto the offered arm and focused on trying to copy the quirk, just over a minute later and Izuku scrunched up his face, as if he was trying hard to remember something, before he grew almost another half of his own height. This feels different. Izuku remarked as he slowly walked around at his new height. I don't feel like I can get any bigger than this though. He remarked uncertainly. Strange. The male nurse commented. I can only go between regular height and giant size. Nothing in between and it's always been exactly double my base height. He looks like he only went up about half of his height, potentially unable to fully replicate transformation type quirks. The female specialist remarked as she noted the difference. Because his base quirk is a mutant type maybe he can't overly change his body composition or structure. Or maybe all transformation types are only able to express half power, she theorized and both of the other specialists seem to be considering this as well. That's still neat though. Izuku smiled as he went back to his regular height. Have fun with it, big guy. The male nurse grinned as he ruffled Izuku's hair playfully. Guess I'm last. The female doctor smiled at Izuku kindly. My quirk isn't anything fancy. Just a minor mutant type, she informed as she moved her hair aside revealing two small horns on her head. I jokingly named them Oni Horns. She grinned and Izuku chuckled at her naming. Once again Izuku placed his hand on an offered arm. After a few minutes of nothing happening Izuku shook his head towards the specialists watching. I can't do it. There's nothing there, no feeling or anything. Izuku informed them and all three specialists rapidly recorded the new information. Fascinating, simply fascinating. The third specialist remarked as he input the new data. So no ability to copy mutant types, perhaps because his quirk is itself a mutant type? The first specialist theorized as he looked over the information they had compiled. It seems that might be the case. The female specialist nodded as she looked over the results so far. Emitter copies at full power. Transformation copies at half power and mutant can't be copied at all. This is still incredible. Permanent copying has never been documented before. Even in this limited capacity, it's revolutionary to Corkology. The Midoriya family left the hospital to return home that afternoon with a healthy son and a new Cork registry. Registry. Name. Midoriya Zuku. Cork. Collector. Type. Mutant. Subsets of both emitter and transformation as well due to Cork's properties. Registry. Izuku was pretty happy all things considered after his hospital stay. He'd finally figured out his quirk and had something to show to his peers. Maybe now they'd see he hadn't been lying these past six years. That evening his parents had smiled and happily offered up their own quirks to be copied in hopes of helping Izuku's future hero career. Izuku and Inko had both held each other while tears streamed down their faces after the copying was confirmed successful. Hisashi chuckled fondly at his wife's and son's propensity for tears before pulling both of them into a big family hug. It was unfortunate that so much of a person's worth or self-worth was placed on their quirk in the modern era. Izuku had gone to his elementary school the following Monday and happily showed off what his quirk could do. While many were amazed it didn't take long before that amazement turned to fear. A fear of losing the individuality that their quirk represented of being less unique if Izuku also had their quirk. The green-haired boy quickly found himself ostracized again. He held out some small hope that Kakin wouldn't think his quirk was frightening but was disappointed in a completely different way by his old friend. Keep your hands away from me, Deku. Bakugo Katsuki growled at the green-haired boy. You're not taking my explosion quirk just to make yourself worth something. But, Kakin, I'd never, I wouldn't. Izuku tried to assure his friend that he'd never take a copy of his quirk without Katsuki's permission, but the ash blonde wouldn't hear it and told Izuku to stay away from him. The green-haired boy walked home alone that day with tears in his eyes. Inko had held him close and reassured him that everything would be okay in time. That he'd become an amazing hero and people would look up to him as a great example of helping society. Hisashi also comforted his son and told him that he'd find friends that wouldn't care about his quirk or that would think it was amazing in the future. Izuku would spend the last year of elementary school as a complete outcast regardless. For the first two years of junior high this stayed the same as well. 
most of the students in Aldera Junior High had come from the same elementary school as Izuku so his quirk was quickly outed to any student that didn't already know, maybe I should just quit. Izuku thought morosely as he walked up the stairs of the apartment complex. The Midoriya family would be moving out during the summer this year, Hisashi had gotten the promotion at his office and made much more money these days. For the last two years he'd saved up and now the family was putting the last bit of paperwork in to move into their new home, a nice two-story house on the edge of Mizutafu, it even had a small backyard which Izuku was sure his parents would enjoy. His mother was interested in trying to start a garden once they'd moved in, what's got you looking so down today, Midoriya Kuen? An old man asked as Izuku trudged towards the apartment. Izuku had spoken to this old man on several occasions since he'd been old enough to talk. Kanshu Saito was a retired policeman, the former head of villain transport for the Tokyo metropolitan area. The old man and his wife lived in the apartment complex just a few places down from the Midoriyas, nothing much, Kanshu san. Izuku tried to smile but the old man shook his head, you know it's just Saito G for you, Midoriya Kuen. Saito smiled at the young teen. Tell me what's got you so upset. So Izuku told the old man about his treatment by his peers and the years of being excluded. After he finished Izuku was surprised that he actually felt better. Thank you for listening. Izuku bowed and Saito chuckled. It wasn't a problem, Midoriya Kuen. Saito assured. But you shouldn't listen to those kids. All kids are a bit self-centered, and teenagers can be even more so. But if you want this old man's opinion, you'll do great things as a hero. I'd bet money on it. The old man chuckled and Izuku smiled genuinely at the old man's honest support. Thank you very much, Saito G. Izuku bowed again. Tell you what Midoriya Kuen, why don't you copy my quirk? It got me to my old positon in the police force. I'm sure a future great hero like you will put it to good use. Saito offered and held out his hand. R, are you sure, Saito G? Izuku asked shocked. He'd trained with the quirks he'd already copied back when he discovered his quirk, he felt even with just force projection, healing aura, and half-giant as he'd taken to calling his only transformation copy, that he'd still make a pretty great hero, but Saito G's quirk would put him even further beyond that, Kanshu Saito's quirk was an emitter type and part of the rare erasure subtype of quirks. In the simplest terms whoever Saito touched lost the ability to use their quirk until he let go. Hence the name quirk nullification, though like most erasure type quirks it didn't do much to mutant types. But emitter and transformation users were as good as quirkless when under Sato's power. It'll do far more good in the hands of a young, up-and-coming, hero than in this retired old man's. Most of the villains I had to transport gave up when they realized their quirks didn't work anymore. The look on some of their faces is still burned into my mind to be honest. I guess if you've gone your whole life being able to do something, and then you suddenly can't, it shakes your worldview quite a bit, Saito commented and Izuku nodded. It did sound plausible, if he suddenly wasn't able to walk for some reason Izuku was sure that he'd be freaking out too, thank you again, Saito G, I won't let you down. Izuku promised as he reached out and shook the old man's hand, a minute later and Izuku placed his hand on Saito's shoulder and Saito placed his hand on Izuku's, the team felt out the new ability and applied it, and then a few seconds later Saito tried to apply his quirk to Izuku, well, I'll be, so that's what it feels like. Saito chuckled as he realized he wasn't able to use his quirk, his quirk nullification was nullified by Izuku's new copy of quirk nullification because he'd let the teen activate his first. Good work, Midoriya Kuen, thank you, Saito G. I'll put this to the best use I can. Izuku beamed at the older man. I recommend learning some grappling techniques then. Saito chuckled. If you know how to lock a person's arms or wrist you'll keep control of them even if they try to flail around. Quirk nullification will keep their quirk inactive so long as you can maintain physical contact. Just be careful around mutant types, some of those people can pack a heck of a punch. The old man advised while briefly rubbing his chest as if remembering such a blow, that's a good idea. Izuku nodded in agreement. You might look into asking others if they'd let you copy their quirks, Midoriya Kuen. Saito said and Izuku looked up at him confused. His ability to copy quirks was why his peers avoided him in the first place. I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that would love to see their quirks put to use in hero work, even if they themselves wouldn't be able to make it in the profession, 
maybe their quirks could do some good in the world, I guess I could consider it. Izuku admitted with a thoughtful look on his face. He had a few months left of his second year of junior high, the internet could potentially put him into contact with people who'd want to help out heroes, or a future hero in Izuku's case. Izuku continued the short walk to his apartment after saying goodbye to Saito, his mind was running through the potential of asking other people online to copy their quirks for a chance that their quirk would be used by a future hero, it wasn't the worst idea and it could potentially give him the chance to help more people in the future. Over the next almost 18 months Izuku would go online and onto hero fan forums with his offer, to his surprise he'd actually gotten several replies accepting his offer and asking for a meetup time and place. He'd been safe and gone with his father for the first several meetups. All of them had been positive however, with fans of heroes eager and happy that their weak or impractical quirks could be used to make a positive change in the world. In this manner Izuku gathered copies of dozens of quirks within 8 months. The green-haired future hero then spent the final 10 months before his entrance exams for UA high school training with the various quirks, learning to use multiple quirks in synchronicity to create much more powerful effects. Though thinking back on Bakugo's reaction to Izuku's application to UA was annoying, yet another memory of the blonde that Izuku wished he didn't have. Flashback, you're all third years now, it's time for you to start seriously considering your futures. Their homeroom teacher told the class as he looked at them from the podium, while normally I would pass out these career aptitude tests, why bother? I know you all want to be heroes. The entire class, barring two, cheered as they showed off their quirks. Yes, yes, you all have very nice quirks, but using them at school is against the rules. So restrain yourselves. Hey, sensei, don't lump me in with all these extras. Bakugo spoke up. This lot would be lucky to end up as sidekicks to a busted D-lister. I'm the real deal, predictably his fellow classmates had something to say about that as they all tossed insults his way. Bring it on. I'll take you all on. Hmm, you do have impressive test results. The teacher commented. Maybe you will get into UA. Cue the shocked exclamations of the rest of the class that Bakugo was trying to get into the number one hero school. That's why UA is perfect for me. Bakugo replied as he stood up from his seat. I aced all the mock tests. I'm the only one at this school that stands a chance of getting in. I'll be more popular than All Might himself and become the richest hero of all time. People all across the world will know my name. And it all starts with UA. Oh yes, Midoriya, you applied for UA as well, right? The teacher asked looking over his paperwork. Izuku sighed knowing Bakugo's temper was going to flare but still replied to his teacher. Yes, sensei. Izuku replied and all of the other students whispered among themselves, Deku. Bakugo roared as he tried to slam his hand bursts of his explosion quirk already going off, onto Izuku's desk, the sudden grip on the ash blonde's wrist and the disappearance of his explosion stopped all talking in the room cold, please control yourself, Bakugo. Izuku requested as he nullified Bakugo's quirk, get the hell off me. Bakugo yelled as he jerked his arm away from Izuku. Trying to copy my quirk? He accused the green-haired boy, I don't copy others' quirks without their permission, Bakugo. Izuku informed the explosive blonde. I also don't have any real interest in your quirk, personally it comes off as a bit too destructive when paired with a loose temper, what did you say? Bakugo growled but the teacher had apparently recovered, Bakugo, sit down. The teacher demanded. Bakugo glared angrily at Izuku before stomping over to his seat, did he just turn off Bakugo's quirk? A girl a row away from Izuku asked another one, I think he did. Her friend replied back, how many quirks does Midoriya have? A male student whispered to another, only to get a shrug in response, if only they knew. Izuka thought to himself a small flicker of amusement passing through him before he refocused on the teacher. End flashback, Izuku was getting ready to head to UA for the entrance exams while watching the morning news. Apparently some good Samaritans had gone and cleaned up Dagoba Municipal Park Beach over the last few months. Izuku couldn't help but smile at that, it was a good deed done for others without any prompting, that was the kind of thing that heroes should do, helping others without being asked just because it was the right thing to do. Seeing the time Izuku headed over to the door to put on his shoes, Izuku, do your best, we'll be cheering for you. 
Inko smiled at her son. Go get them, Izuku. We know you'll get in. Hisashi grinned at him, all the confidence in the world behind the father's words. Thanks mom, thanks dad. Izuku smiled at his parents before leaving and making his way to the train station. The ride to UA was only about 20 minutes by train so Izuku just scrolled through his phone and went over a few topics to refresh his mind. The written exam was first so Izuku wanted to make sure he was clear-headed and ready to cover any topic that would appear. Shortly after disembarking from the train Izuku was standing before the gates of UA, time to take my first step towards being a hero. He grinned to himself as he stepped past the gate and followed the signs towards the written exam site. After the written exam, ow, my poor brain. Izuku grumbled as he massaged his temples. UA was not only the top hero school in Japan, but it boasted some of the best academic scores in the nation as well. The written test had clearly demonstrated that with the amount of subjects it covered as well as the depth they went into each of them. Still, Izuku felt like he'd done well, at least well enough that he'd pass in the upper percentile. Probably, lunch was taken after the written test and then an instructional presentation would be given for the practical test. While Izuku was eating he also looked over the other examinees to check out their quirks and potentially add more pages to his newest quirk notebook. Exam Site B so just three types of robots to hunt down and one gimmick to try and avoid. Not too difficult. Izuku mumbled to himself as he stretched a bit while waiting for the exam to start. He was honestly still surprised at the large mock city that UA called a training site. The fact that UA had multiple sites like this one was amazing. Start! Present Mike called out loudly from where he stood on a platform at the top of a tower, his voice reaching out across the large testing grounds and to all the various groups of applicants. Everybody in Izuku's testing group froze up for a moment at the sudden start. What are you waiting for? There are no countdowns in real life. Run. Go, go, go. With that Izuku and the rest of the examinees dashed forward into the large mock cityscape. Izuku ran slightly off course from the main group of students and found his first target quickly, a one-pointer according to the paper they'd gone over. Target acquired, eliminate. The machine intoned and Izuku couldn't help but grin as it moved towards him. A bang went off and the one-pointer now had a hole in its head. The machine collapsed to the ground and Izuku lowered his hand. So air compression, amplification, and force projection is enough to deal with the one-pointers. Good to know. Izuku grinned as he activated another quirk, platform, then used force projection to leap off the ground and land on the floating square of air. Another assisted leap and Izuku now stood on top of a building looking around for more targets. If I want to get the best score I can I should go all out. Keeping property damage in mind, of course, wouldn't be surprised if that was factored into the overall score. So let's see. Izuku trailed off as he looked over the site. Spotting a large gathering of robots of multiple point varieties off in one section of the cityscape that none of the other examinees had gotten to yet. Izuku grinned as he made great use of force projection from his feet to leap across the rooftops and reach the area first. Target acquired. Rang out over a dozen times as all the bots noticed him and took aim. This one's for you dad. Izuku announced as he took a deep breath. Fire breath, temperature fluctuation, heat generation gas manipulation, and amplification. Izuku then exhaled a truly massive stream of fire towards the clustered robots. The veritable firestorm quickly engulfed and decimated the bots before they even got a shot off. When the flames petered out a black scorch mark was left on the road along with the half-melted forms of the robots. Holy shit! What was that? Another examinee yelled having apparently arrived just in time to witness Izuku's attack. Izuku paid the guy little attention before he jumped back towards the rooftops to continue hunting. Now I have to do one for mom. Izuku smiled to himself as he dashed across the rooftops and headed for another untouched spot of the cityscape. There we go, he exclaimed at seeing a more spread out group of robots on the street. Attraction of small things, mental boost, enhance function, force multiplier, and efficiency. All the small stones and pebbles that normally littered any street suddenly rocketed upwards at insane speeds tearing through most of the robots. The storm of stones headed for Izuku before he grinned and activated the next quirk. Reverse force. The mass of tiny rocks suddenly stopped their movement, only to then shoot back towards the robots with the same speed they'd been rocketing towards Izuku at. 
Needless to say the robots were perforated so badly it looked like a military squadron had gone trigger happy on the machines, leaving most of them in pieces all over the road, in the teacher's viewing booth. What the hell is this kid's quirk? Midnight exclaimed completely confused by what she was witnessing from the green-haired examinee. I thought he had some kind of air cannon quirk at first, or maybe air manipulation but then he went and breathed a firestorm that would probably make Endeavor acknowledge him. Ectoplasm stated as he watched the boy, are we sure it isn't some kind of advanced psychokinesis? Vlad King questioned as he looked on, what is this young man? Tashinori questioned himself mentally from the back of the room watching the green-haired teen use what appeared to be multiple quirks. Could he have actually had a child? Maybe in the past and his lineage has now come full circle? I'll need to keep an eye on this young man. The number one hero thought to himself watching Azuku run across the mock cityscape, what's he doing now? Snipe questioned and everyone's eyes locked onto the screen showing Azuku. Let's see if my physical combination works out in a live combat situation. Izuku grinned as he got into a relaxed horse stance before focusing. Physicality boost, efficiency, enhance function, kinetic boost, durability up, force multiplier, force projection, and lactic acid elimination. Izuku suddenly blurred forward and the cameras had a difficult time keeping up with the teen. A one-pointer suddenly lost its head to a green blur. A three-pointer had a hole in the middle of a chassis and several important-looking parts were now on the ground next to it. A two-pointer was simply in two pieces suddenly. On and on it went for almost 30 seconds before the blur slowed down and Izuku was seen leaning against a wall of breathing heavily. It looks like he's caused himself some damage. Cementos commented as the teachers looked at the teen. With Izuku, shit. Izuku hissed out as his whole body hurt. That combination worked great but the kickback from pushing his body to such astounding physical feats was a deep, widespread pain throughout his entire body. With a deep breath Izuku activated healing aura and his body was engulfed in the light green glowed as he healed. So glad I got this one. He mentally rejoiced as the pain faded away and he was good to go again. Teacher's viewing booth. Did he, did he just heal himself? Recovery girl asked as she looked at the teen resume his run through the cityscape. It would seem so. Thirteen replied her distorted voice still managing to come off as shocked. Nizu, if that young man's ability can be used on others I want to help train him with it. Recovery girl informed the principal. If the boy's healing ability could be used on others she might have finally found a good assistant to help her keep these rambunctious kids from falling apart. Hmm, we can most definitely inquire. Nizu the, odd, chimera-like. Principal replied with a smile, his eyes never leaving the screen following Izuku, power loader, it's about time and I'm interested to see the examinee's response to your creations, yes sir. Power loader grinned as he flipped up a plastic cover over a big red button. Ready or not kids, here they come, with that he pushed the button and loud rumbling was heard at all of the test sites, test site B. Izuku watched from the street as the giant zero pointer moved its way down the main street of the mock cityscape. No wonder that's just a gimmick. It's ridiculously huge. It would take either a very specific quirk or one capable of truly overwhelming force to stop it. Looking down at the rubble strewn around by the behemoth machine Izuku caught a glimpse of someone half buried under some hunks of concrete. The biggest problem with this was the Zero Pointer's massive tank treads bearing down on them. Izuku was dashing forward without even thinking about it. Please, a little help. Anybody? A brunette girl cried out as she tried to struggle her way out of the rubble that trapped her. She hadn't expected the gimmick zero pointer to be so huge that it made buildings crumble just by being near them. I've got you. A boy's voice called out and the rubble pinning her was carefully removed. Can you stand? My ankle, I think it's broken. The brunette replied as she turned to look at her helper. He was a nice looking guy with green hair and eyes, with freckles on his face. In the very back of her mind a thought filtered through that she didn't pay any attention to. He's kinda cute. I'm getting you out of here. Izuku told her as he picked her up in a princess carry and bolted away from the machine. The brunette suddenly noticed her ankle didn't hurt and a quick glance revealed a light green glow fading away. Run from here on. I'm going to try and stop it from getting any closer to the other examinees. He yelled as he gently placed the girl on her feet and bolted back towards the zero pointer. W.H. Watt. Wait. Why? 
the brunette tried to ask Izuku. There aren't any points for beating it, the points don't matter. Izuku yelled back as he ran. If you can do something that'll help others, even if it doesn't benefit you, then a hero should do it. With that he was out of range and the girl could only stare at his back as he ran. He's right. She mumbled to herself. So cool, with Izuku, I've only got one chance at this. Izuku breathed in deeply before exhaling. Sharpen, force projection, amplification, physicality boost, efficiency, enhance function, heat generation, temperature fluctuation, force multiplier, kinetic boost, and energy burn. Izuku's arm seemed to gain a blade-like edge, the edge glowed yellow-white with an intense amount of heat, and his body seemed to get slightly bulkier, his arm suddenly tensed as it started to literally vibrate from the amount of energy it was containing. The zero-pointer continued its rumbling forward as its massive treads tore up the street and the nearby buildings cracked and crumbled as it passed anywhere close. The large machine locked onto a single person directly in its path as it moved forward. The next thing it, or anybody else, saw was a massive yellow-white arc of force and heat blitz through the area and disperse high into the air. The onboard cameras from the zero-pointer recorded the green-haired teen collapsing to the ground holding his right arm. Then they recorded the ground as the top half of the zero-pointer slid forward off the lower half and collapsed to the ground. Teachers viewing booth, did he just cut the zero-pointer in half? Almost every teacher present questioned loudly while Misa laughed, not entirely sanely, as he watched the zero-pointer cease to function. The area that had been cut still glowed a bright orange from the heat that had cleaved through it. My, my, this young man is rather impressive isn't he? Mizu remarked seeing all of his staff staring wide-eyed at the screen, with Izuku, too much. Too much. Way too much. Izuku grit his teeth at the pain he'd just caused his right arm. The limb was swollen and burned from the power Izuku had managed to generate by combining so many quirks together at once. He'd never had a need to test out such a combination before, and now he was suffering the consequences of doing it without any form of practice. The light green glow of healing aura surrounded the limb for a bit and the burn slowly faded away while the arm slowly returned to its original size as the swelling went away. Oh crap! Izuku managed to utter as he got lightheaded and fell backwards. I used up all of my energy. He was preparing to smack his head on the concrete but his head fell onto something much softer. Eep! A familiar voice called out. Izuku forced his eyes to open. Looking up into the face of the brunette girl from earlier Azuka realized his head must be on her thighs. He would have gone red at the thought if he wasn't so tired. Sorry. Izuku muttered out softly as he felt his eyes getting heavy. And no pee problem. The brunette stuttered out. T thanks for s saving me earlier. Snow, problem. Izuku managed to get out. My name's Yurariko Ochako, thank you for helping me. Ochako smiled, her cheeks very red. Midoriya, Izuku, you're welcome. Izuku replied as he closed his eyes and drifted off. Thanks again, Midoriya Kuen. Ochako smiled softly as she let him rest. Most of the other examinees still hadn't rebooted from the display Izuku had done. And stop. Present Mick's voice was heard throughout the testing grounds. The exam is over. Ochako barely paid any attention to the loud announcement though, her eyes not leaving Izuku's sleeping face. Cute. Ochako thought, only for her mind to catch up with her a second later and make her face go fully red. One week later, Midoriya home. Izuku. It's here, son. Hisashi exclaimed as he charged up the stairs towards his son's room with the letter addressed to the teen. It was from UA and in Hisashi's mind contained his son's acceptance letter. Thanks, Dad. Izuku thanked his father before taking the letter and heading downstairs. Let's open it together in the living room. The duo made their way downstairs and Inko was quick to join them. Here it goes. He said as he opened the letter and out came a metallic disc. Hmm. Hisashi looked at the disc before it lit up and a hologram appeared in their living room. Hello, Midoriya Izuku. I'm Nizu the principal of UA High School. Nizu introduced himself. I'm happy to inform you that you passed the written exam with a very respectable 97%. As for your practical exam score please look behind me. The chimera pointed to an electronic board that turned on showing Izuku's picture and score. Practical exam score. Izuku Midoriya. Villain points, 100. Rescue points, 75. Total, 175 points. Practical exam score. 
as you can see you performed very well. The new record holder for highest score in fact. Nizu congratulated with a smile on his face. I'm pleased to welcome you to UA High School, Midoriya-san. This will be your hero academia, that's my boy. Hisashi cheered as he ruffled his son's hair. My baby boy. Inko happy cried as she hugged her son for all she was worth. Thanks mom, thanks dad, I'm so relieved. Izuku smiled while exhaling a sigh of relief. Even though he'd reason that he'd passed it was completely different actually getting the confirmation, also record holder for highest score. Holy crap yes, this is just the start though. Izuku thought to himself as he hugged his mother back while his father was planning a celebration. I'll keep going, keep helping people, and eventually be the best hero I can. Thus began the tale of the great hero known as Synthesis. Chapter 2, First Day at UA. 1A, 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 there it is. Izuku smiled at finally finding his classroom. UA was a massive school and he'd almost gotten lost. A helpful upperclassman had kindly point out the way for him and given him a thumbs up before leaving. Standing before the door, Izuku took a deep breath and exhaled before opening the door and stepping into the room. Take your feet off that desk, immediately. A blue-haired teen demanded as he chopped the air. It's an insult not only to the people that made it, but also to our seniors who studied here before us. You're kidding me, right? Bakugo sneered back at the other teen. Did your old school put a stick up your ass, or were you born with it? Of course, why wouldn't we be in the same class? Izuku sighed in defeat. Did the universe have it out for him or something? It's him, the record holder. The blue-haired teen spoke as he noticed Izuku standing in the doorway, TCH. Bakugo scowled at Izuku from across the classroom. All of the other students in the classroom, the majority based on the fact that only a few seats were empty, looked towards him at the same time. Ah, uh, hi. Izuku greeted the class as a whole. He wasn't used to having so much attention on him all at once. Good morning, my name is Ida Tenya, from Sumai Private Academy. Ida introduced himself to Izuku. I'm Izuku Midoriya, it's nice to meet you. Izuku returned the greeting. I was very impressed by your record-breaking achievement at the entrance exams, Midoriya. Ida stated and Izuku felt his cheeks redden slightly. Oh, thank you. Izuku replied nervously. He needed to get it together or he was going to look like a fool in front of his new classmates. He heard some comments from his new classmates when they heard Ida's mentioning of his record breaking. So he's the guy that scored even more than All Might? A red-haired boy said to a blonde guy with a black, lightning bolt-like, streak in his hair. No way, are you for real? The blonde replied, looking between Izuku and the red head. I heard the old record was like 140 or something. A purplet girl mentioned as she looked over at Izuku. I saw the list for the entrance exam. He got 175 on it. Karo. A verdette girl with long hair and large eyes commented. That's crazy. A short boy with purple balls on his head piped up. Damn Deku. Bakugo growled from his seat, still glaring at Izuku. Hey, I recognize that messy hair. Midoriya, how are you? A familiar female voice spoke up from behind Izuku. Turning around Izuku was greeted with the sight of Yuriko Chako in the UA student uniform. She looks really cute in the uniform. Izuku thought to himself before he spoke. Good morning, Yuriko san it's nice to see you again. Ochako smiled at him in return. What do you think we're doing today, besides orientation? Ochako asked with a smile. The girl had a bright and bubbly personality and Izuku found himself a mixture of flustered and enamored by it. I wonder what our teachers are like. I'm so excited to meet everybody. If you're just here to make friends you can pack up your stuff and leave. A male voice came from behind the brunette. Turning to look the duo found a man in a yellow sleeping bag lying on the floor. Neither was quite sure what to make of this new occurrence though. Who is this guy? Izuku wondered as he looked at the scruffy face poking out of the sleeping bag. Welcome to UA's hero course. The man spoke as he stood up and unzipped the sleeping bag. It took you all eight seconds to quiet down, that's too long, time is precious, rational students would understand that. Hey! Like, wait up! A female voice called out as a girl ran up to the 1A classroom door. Sorry, I know I'm almost late, I somehow got sent towards the 1B classroom instead of 1A. My bad, my bad, 
the girl spoke up as she rubbed the back of her head. She had fawn-colored hair and warm dark brown eyes. She also filled out the UA uniform very well. Izuka realized what he just thought and felt his cheeks heat up a bit. Don't let it happen again. The scruffy man spoke up. Sure thing. Psyched to be here. The girl replied with a bright smile. I'm your homeroom teacher, Aizawa Shoda. Aizawa informed the class. All of the students blinked in shock at the information. Right, let's get to it. Put these on and head outside. He pulled out a gym uniform from the sleeping bag and showed it to the class. Ha! Huh. Rang out through the classroom. In only a few minutes the class of 20 found themselves on a practice field. Thankfully UA had some pretty good sign markers to lead students to locker rooms and practice fields. So this time no one got lost on the way there. A quirk assessment test? All the students questioned when they heard what they'd be doing. But what about orientation? We're going to miss it. Ochako spoke up. If you want to be a pro you don't have time for pointless ceremonies. Aizawa replied. Here at UA we're not tethered to traditions. That means we get to run our classes however we see fit. With a quiet exhale Aizawa held up a phone-like device. You've been taking standardized athletics tests your entire school lives, but you've never been allowed to use your quirks. The Ministry of Education is still trying to pretend we're all created equal and not letting those with the most power excel. It's not rational. One day they'll learn. With a shake of his head Aizawa focused on Izuku. Midoriya, you broke the record on the entrance exam. What was your best throw on the softball pitch in junior high? 63 meters, sir. Izuku replied, right, try doing it with your quirk. Aizawa instructed and pointed to a circle on the ground. Anything goes as long as you stay in the circle, all right? Izuku looked at the ball in his hand. It was equal in both size and weight to a softball, but with a metallic black ring around the middle. What would be the best combination for a distance throw? He thought to himself as he rapidly went over the list of quirks he had in his head. Yeah. That one, and that one, add that one too, with these as well. That should do it. Izuku mused before he held the palm in his hand and extended his arm at a 45 degree angle. Air compression, amplification, enhance function, kinetic boost, force multiplier, and force projection. What's he waiting for? A pink skinned girl asked as Izuku stood in place for a few seconds. Powering up, I think. Ochako replied, making the pink girl tilt her head in confusion. A large blast of air sent the ball rocketing into the sky. The strong wind this kicked up almost staggered some of the students. Bakugo grit his teeth at seeing the force Suzuku had unleashed while all of the other teens were impressed. The wind died down a second later and Izuku looked towards Aizawa for further instructions. The teacher was looking down at the device in his hands as if waiting for something. All of you need to know your maximum capabilities. Aizawa stated as he turned to face the class as a whole. It's the most rational way to figure out your potential as a pro hero. He held up the device in his hands so that the students could see it. On the screen was Izuku's result of 1 for 10.3 M. Izuku heard all of his classmates gasp at the distance. Whoa, 1400 meters, are you kidding me? The boy with the blonde, lightning bolt streaked, hair exclaimed. Was that an air cannon quirk? A large boy with gray hair and a face mask questioned. Huh. At the exam it was a super hot cutting force. Ochako remembered. Maybe he can alter the temperature and other properties? I wanna go, this looks fun. The pink girl clapped her hands together. This is what I'm talking about. Getting to use our quirks as much as we want. A black haired boy cheered. So, this looks fun, huh? Aizawa questioned, quickly silencing the students. You have three years at UA to become a hero. Do you all think it's going to be all games and playtime? Seeing none of the students replying Aizawa continued. Fools, today you'll engage in eight physical tests to gauge your potential. Whoever comes in last will be deemed to have none and will be expelled immediately. That got a round of gasps from all of the students. Immediate expulsion for coming in the lowest on eight tests? Izuka thought in shock at Aizawa's words. As I said, we get to decide how our classes are run. If that's going to be a problem you can head home right now. Aizawa stated as he pushed his long hair up out of his eyes and stared at his students. Now let the games begin. First test 50 meter dash. 
Izuku watched as Ida and the girl with frog-like features took their places at the starting line. He was interested in seeing how his classmates did and what all of their quirks were, though he could tell at a glance that both Ida and the girl had mutant-type quirks. Their times were impressive though, Ida clocked in at just over 3 seconds and the girl at about 5 and a half seconds, watching his classmates run, and in some cases, use their quirks in interesting ways to complete the 50 meters, really made Izuku wish he had his notebook right now. Ochako finished in just over 7 seconds and seemed pleased with her result. The fawn-haired girl and the pink girl both finished at just over 5 seconds, though the pink girl appeared to be skating on some kind of substance coming from her feet, which Izuku thought was a good way to complete the test. Finally it was Izuku's turn, and the universe seemed to still be messing with him since he was paired with Bakugo. Force projection, kinetic boost, physicality boost, enhance function, efficiency, force multiplier, amplification Izuku combined the quirks and compiled their effects as he took his position. When the go was given Izuku launched off the blocks so powerfully they shattered. He clocked in just behind Ida at 3.3 seconds. Bakugo was snarling when he came in at 4.3 seconds while using his explosions as thrusters. Damn cheating Deku. Bakugo yelled loudly as he stomped past Izuku. Cheating? A black-haired boy with odd elbows questioned. How'd he cheat? The fawn-haired girl questioned, her head tilted in confusion. Bakugo-san appears to be a sore loser. A tall ravenette girl with a rather voluptuous figure commented looking at Bakugo with distaste. Agreed, I saw no means of cheating. Ida nodded as he looked between Izuku and Bakugo. Oh shut up, you all don't even know how useless Deku is without other people to leech off of. Bakugo retorted with a snarl. That brought up confused looks from everyone and Aizawa sighed at having to stop the tests. Midoriya. As your teacher I've already received your information from your junior high. If you don't mind, please clear up this situation by explaining your quirk. Aizawa sighed. Izuku exhaled and his eyes dimmed a bit at having to reveal his quirk so soon. But he didn't want anyone to get the wrong impression of him by listening to Bakugo. All right, sir. Izuku agreed before he turned to face his classmates. My quirk is a mutant type, it's called Collector. He saw several of his classmates mumble the name and looks of confusion spread across their faces. My quirk allows me to permanently copy the quirks of others through a small sample of their blood. There it was, Izuku lamented, the shock and unease in his classmates' eyes. He was really hoping he'd be able to make a friend or two before he was forced to reveal his quirk to everyone. Just as he was about to resign himself to being an outcast again, someone spoke up in his defense, sort of. Any quirk? Any at all? Ochako asked curiously and Izuku almost felt like crying from relief when he didn't see any fear or unease in Ochako's eyes. No, not all. Izuku shook his head. I can't copy other mutant type quirks, and transformation type quirks only express about half of their full capabilities when I copy them. I can copy emitter types at full power but I have to work out how to use them myself. Any drawbacks of using the quirks I copy also apply to me as well. I can use multiple quirks in synchronicity to achieve new or more powerful effects as well, but using too many or generating too much force can lead to injury. Izuku almost sank to the floor in unbelieving joy when he saw the faces and eyes of his classmates go from fear and unease to looks of curiosity and interest. That's, like, totes amazing. The fawn-haired girl exclaimed her eyes wide and a smile on her face. It's a very interesting quirk. The ravenette girl nodded, looking at Izuku curiously. That's wild. A red-haired boy yelled out as he held up his fists excitedly. As interesting as Midoriya's quirk is, we have tests to finish. Aizawa spoke up and all of the students snapped to attention. Izuku watched on, trying to commit quirks to memory for his notebook, as the rest of the class finished up their 50-meter dashes. When it came to the grip strength test, Shoji Mizo blew everyone else out of the water with an insane 540 kg squeeze. Izuku had mixed physicality boost, force multiplier, amplification, and enhance function together to get an impressive 250 kg reading. Momo was easily the most impressive, score wise, as she created what seemed to be a miniature hydraulic clamp and it eventually maxed out the dynamometer. The seated toe touch test had been challenging for Izuku. While he was flexible and could get a good score he didn't have a transformation quirk that would let him extend his arms past their natural limits. Something to look into for the future maybe?
the standing long jump was cleared with the same combination of quirks as the 50-meter dash. Izuku had simply changed the direction he'd applied the force and launched himself clear over the sandbox, multiple times the length of the box to be accurate. The repeated sidesteps were easy enough. Physicality boost, enhance function, efficiency, and lactic acid elimination saw Izuku securing second place, only beaten out by the short boy with the ball-like hair. The boy bounced between two cushions of his quirk at such speed that no one could keep up. The sit-ups test was also conquered with the same four quirks as the sidesteps. Only in this test Izuku took first as everyone else lost out to their physiology and the buildup of lactic acid in their abdominal muscles. With the lactic acid elimination quirk, Izuku's body was able to bleed away the acid before it could build up and cause the painful burning it did in others. In the endurance running test Izuku and Ida eventually tied. Izuku could keep going with his four enhancement quirks carrying him through the test. Aizawa had actually just told them to stop after they'd gone on for so long that they were cutting into the class's time to finish the last test. As Izuku had already done the softball pitch test he didn't have to go again. Instead he was able to watch as his classmates came up with their own methods of getting farther throws, if their quirks were applicable to the test, of course. Bakugo raged when he'd only gotten about half of Izuku's distance and stewed in his rage off to the side of the rest of the class. Izuku was very impressed when Momo had created a functioning cannon of all things and fired the ball out of it. Her score of 3 kilometers and change was well earned in his opinion. Ochako left every student's jaw on the floor when she'd removed the effects of gravity from the ball and seemingly thrown it into orbit. Her reading came out as infinity but Aizawa would only mark it as 1 meter further than Momo's score. I'm just going to bring up the whole list. It's not worth going over each individual score. Aizawa informed the class as he clicked the device in his hand. A hologram appeared and listed off their names from 1st to 20th place. Izuku stared for a second, not quite sure if he could believe it, when he saw his name sitting just below Momo's. The fact that Momo had taken 1st place meant that Izuku was 2nd. Reading through the whole list Izuku tried to match names to faces so he could start identifying his classmates. Quirk Assessment Ranks Yayorosa Momo Midoriya Izuku Todoroki Shoto, Bakugo Katsuki, Ida Tenya, Tokoyami Fumikich, Shoji Mizo, Utsushimi Kami, Kurashima Ijiro, Ashido Mina, Yuraruko Chako, Kota Koji, Sato Rikido, Ajui Tsuyu, Aoyama Yuga, Siro Hanta, Kaminari Denki, Jiro Kyuka, Hagakure Toru, Mineta Minoru, Quirk Assessment Ranks, No! The short guy with the purple balls for hair screamed as he looked at the list. I can't be expelled. How will I get popular with girls and touch their bodies now? Needless to say this was met with, less than pleasant reactions from the girls of the class. Degenerate. Momo huffed looking away from the wailing boy. You're gross. Kyuka glared at the panicking Mineta. That's not very heroic. Tsuyu admonished with a shake of her head. Keep dreaming. Kami dismissed the boy. Pervert. Mina turned away from Mineta. That's so wrong. Toru backed away from the boy. Is that why you're here? Ochako looked creeped out as she moved closer to Izuku. Also, I lied about expelling the person in last place. Aizawa informed them with a wave of his hand. It was a logical ruse to make you all try your hardest. I'm saved. Mineta cheered only to be wrapped up in Aizawa's scarves and dragged in front of the teacher. Aizawa's eyes glowed red with his quirk as he held Mineta off the ground at eye level. That being said, if you don't improve your behavior you'll be out of here before you know it. Aizawa informed the, once again, panicking boy. Just because you're not going home today doesn't mean you aren't the first one on the chopping block. Do you understand? Mineta nodded rapidly before being released by Aizawa's scarves and dropping to the ground. Anyway, your papers for the school and the beginning of the semester are on your desks. Make sure you pick them up and read them by tomorrow. Dismissed. The class all breathed out and began to make their way towards the locker rooms to change out of their gym uniforms. Aizawa was walking back towards the teacher's lounge when he ran into All Might just as he turned the corner of the building. The underground hero wasn't surprised though, he'd noticed the large man peeking around the corner for most of the tests. Something you need All Might? Aizawa questioned the new teacher. I was merely curious as to whether you'd expel the entire class or not. All Might replied and with a single look he could tell Aizawa didn't believe him, whatever, if you have nothing to say I'll be going. 
Aizawa walked past the large man. Aizawa, did you notice anything, odd, about young Midoriya? All Might asked, nothing that wasn't covered by the information from his previous school. Is there something I need to be aware of? Aizawa questioned the number one hero. I'll have to do some digging before I can be sure, but it may be for the best to keep a close eye on young Midoriya for a while. All Might said. Aizawa merely shrugged in response. I keep watch over all of my students. Aizawa stated before walking away. Could it be possible? All Might wondered to himself as he thought about the green-haired teen. Could he have a child, or a descendant? Girls' locker room, totally didn't expect this the first day, am I right? Kami asked the other girls as they all changed back into their school uniforms, not a bit. Mina replied with a smile, it was unexpected. Momo admitted, I wonder if everything we missed in orientation is covered in the papers Aizawa told us to pick up and read. Ochako wondered, I'm still surprised about Midoriya-chan's quirk to be honest. Suyu commented with a cute croak at the end, right? It's super crazy. Toru exclaimed, I've never heard of anything like it. Kyuka shook her head, I think it's interesting. Ochako replied, she still remembered being saved by Izuku at the exam. Speaking of guys, we have some hot ones in our class. Kami laughed and Mina joined her. Momo, Kyuka, and Ochako blushed at the topic while Toru giggled and Suyu looked mildly interested right? Who are you looking at Kami-chan? Mina questioned with a grin. The fawn-haired girl smiled teasingly as she looked at the other girls. Well Todoroki is handsome, and Kurashima and Kaminari have some good looks, but that Midoriya is pure fire. Kami tapped her full, pouty lips with the tip of her index finger. I wouldn't mind getting his number. See Kami-san. Isaiah sent that a bee bit fast? Ochako stuttered out with red cheeks. It does seem rather, forward. Momo blushed as she finished with her tie. I think you should go for it. Mina cheered with a bright smile. Go get him, Kami-chan. Toru giggled as she put on her shoes. Can we please talk about something else? Kyuka requested as she closed the locker and revealed her blushing face. We should be hurrying. We need to get our papers and stuff from class still. Tsuyu commented as she headed for the door, already changed. What? No way. I want to keep talking about boys and romance. Mina playfully whined as she followed after the frog-like girl. I'm sure there will be time for such things later. Momo spoke as the girls exited the locker room. For now we should focus on the work we have ahead of us. All right, we'll save it for girl talk later. Mina smiled widely. I'm in. Toru exclaimed as she fell into step with Mina. Count me in too, always fun to dish about cute guys. Kami grinned as the girls walked back towards their classroom. I'm not well versed in such things. Momo admitted with her cheeks pink. We'll get you there, Yamamo. Mina grinned at the ravenette. Yamamo? Momo questioned as she raised her hands to her cheeks cutely. This is going to be a regular thing, isn't it? Kyuka sighed as she walked beside the taller girl. It seems like it. Ochako rubbed the back of her head, mildly embarrassed about the boy talk. This is, like, going to be a fun year. I'm already psyched. Kami smiled as the girls made it to the classroom to collect their stuff. Izuku had no idea that he was already starting to attract some attention from a few of his female classmates. But the year had just begun and Yue was already proving to be a challenging school. He would have to make sure to be ready for whatever the hero course could throw at him. Further down from Izuku, Bakugo was glaring at the Verdette as he constantly thought about his placement in the rankings. Fourth place was unacceptable. Hell, second was already bad, but fourth? The fact that Deka beat him only made it even more infuriating. The damn leech. He'd show that loser who the better hero was the first chance he got. Neither boy knew that said chance was already fast approaching. Chapter 3, Hero Training, Battle Trials. So, normal. Izuka thought as he sat in his morning classes at UA. After yesterday's sudden quirk assessment test, Izuku was wondering if all of the hero course classes would be like that, but, it would seem, that was not the case. All morning class 1A had been doing normal school subjects, math, English, history, art, classical Japanese, all subjects that could be found in any Japanese high school. It all just seemed so, normal. 
Oh wow, I can't believe I get to eat Lunch Rush's food. Izuku held himself back from fanboying entirely, though it was a close thing, as he walked away from the lunch line. The pro hero, Lunch Rush, was a disaster relief hero. A type of support hero that made food for people displaced by natural disasters or powerful villain incidents. The pro's quirk let him cook high-quality food with the same speed and efficiency of a team of 30 chefs. UA saved quite a few paychecks by only having a few other cafeteria staff needed to keep the place clean. Midoriya, over here. Ochako called out as she waved from where she was sitting. Izuku smiled, even as he tried not to fidget nervously, while he walked towards the table. The food here is great, right? The brunette beamed at him as she held her rice bowl up. I'm really excited to try Lunch Rush's food. Izuku agreed as he sat down. Looking around the table revealed Ida, Yayorozu, Utsushimi, Ajui, Jiro, and Rikido sitting with them. It's good stuff. Rikido nodded to him with a smile. I'm surprised this doesn't cost extra. It is very good. Yayorozu smiled as she enjoyed her lunch. Totes the best. Kami grinned, her hand on her cheek as she ate, as expected of a pro like Lunch Rush. Ida nodded as he took a sip of his drink. Mmm, so good. Izuku sighed as he took his first bite of the katsudon he'd picked. He'd been so excited to see his favorite food offered. It wasn't as good as his mom's, in his opinion, but it was still great. What do you guys think afternoon heroics class will be like? Jiro questioned a few moments later. Probably just some introductions and basics, that makes the most sense. Ajui replied as she looked towards the purplet. That does sound reasonable. Yayorosa nodded in agreement. This is UA though. Izuku spoke up. If the heroics teacher is anything like Aizawa then. He trailed off and everyone's faces took on a thoughtful or worried expression. So, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst? Rikido shrugged with a half smile. That might be for the best. Ida nodded while looking contemplative. I hope we won't be threatened with expulsion again. Ochako murmured worriedly, nibbling on her rice. No worries fam, we got this. Kami spoke up brightly, the girl was clearly trying to break the tense mood. We'll do our best. Jiro nodded as she exhaled heavily. Heroics class, I am here. The familiar voice called out and Izuku had to grab his desk to stop from leaping up to his feet. Coming through the door like a normal person, All Might exclaimed as he opened the door and struck a hero pose, his cape fluttering in a slight breeze. No way! Kaminari exclaimed with a huge grin. All Might is our teacher? Kirishima yelled excitedly. It's All Might. It's really him. Izuku was practically vibrating in his chair at seeing his idol up close. Welcome to Heroic's basic training, think of this class as Hero 101. All Might smiled his trademark smile at the class. Today we'll be getting right into the thick of things with this, he proclaimed as he pulled out a card with the word battle printed on it in big, bright red letters. Battle. Bakugo grinned viciously as he stared at the card. Yes, a battle trial. All Might grinned. But if you're going to train to be heroes, you need to look the part. With that he pressed a button on a small remote he had. From the wall emerged twenty metal cases, each marked with a number corresponding to each student's seat. For that, you'll need these, costumes. The entire class exclaimed with a cheer. Exactly. All Might smiled. Get changed and meet me at Ground Beta, this is so awesome. Kirishima cheered loudly. Izuku couldn't help but to agree with his red-haired classmate. Ground Beta, they say the clothing makes the man. All Might intoned as he watched the students start to emerge from the locker rooms. As of this moment you all are heroes, the class all trotted out in their hero costumes, some commenting on others' suits while some maintained a quiet, focused attitude. Izuku emerged with the suit he and his parents had come up with together, a forest green body suit, with reinforced protection for his chest, back, arms, and legs. The armor of the suit was Kevlar, along with polycarbon plates that were lightweight but also strong enough to stop small arms and rifle fire. He had a bright red utility belt with multiple pouches on and his favorite red shoes were covered with metal plates to reinforce them too. Over his lower face he had a solid metal guard that also had a functioning rebreather system in case of gas attacks. He'd considered having some kind of mask or helmet, plus a cape at one point, 
but his parents had questioned the idea. In his mother's words, why would you hide your eyes? They'll make people feel calm and safe. He teared up at that which had led to a family hug fest. Whoa, Midoriya, your costume looks so cool. Ochako smiled brightly as she came up to him. I should have been a bit more specific with mine. The brunette nervously rubbed her head. I was thinking more spacesuit but it ended up being skin tight. Izuku had almost stopped functioning when he'd seen Ochako's costume. The suit left little of the girl's figure to the imagination and Izuku felt his entire face get hot. No way, Chako chan You look great! Kami smiled as she came up beside the brunette. The fawn-haired girl smiled widely as she stood next to Ochako in a black catsuit that was unzipped just enough to show some of her cleavage. She also had a metal ring around her neck to protect it and had a black hat that resembled a policeman's on her head. The only problem was that her suit also left almost nothing to the imagination and Izuku was sure his head was emitting steam by now. I think both of your costumes look great. Izuku smiled barely able to keep himself from stuttering. Thanks. Kami replied with a grin as she obviously looked him up and down. Thank you, Midoriya. Ochako smiled even as her cheeks heated up. Can I ask about the hat, Utsushimi? Izuku questioned as he pointed at the hat on her head. This? Kami asked as she gripped the small brim with her right index finger and thumb. It's to pay homage to my family, both my dad and my grandpa are in the police force, it's also similar to the Shiketsa hats. That was my second choice high school if I didn't make it into UA. I see, that's a cool way to keep your family close, Utsushimi. Izuku smiled at the fawn-haired girl. Thanks fam. Kami smiled back. But you can just call me Kami if you want to. I, I, um. Izuku lost his battle with his nerves at Utsushimi, Kami, allowing him to use her first name so soon after meeting each other. Alright you bunch of newbies. Let's get started. All Might called out and the class gathered around the number one hero. Today we'll be performing battle trials in teams of two. The simulated scenario is that two villains are hiding a nuclear weapon inside of the building. The heroes have 15 minutes to find and subdue the villains or secure the weapon. How will teams be chosen? Ida asked quickly, are there any other conditions for victory? Yayorozu inquired next, can I just blow them up? Bakugo demanded as he glared out of the corner of his eye at Izuku, hold on, hold on. All Might raised his hands towards the students. My quirk isn't super hearing. The number one hero then proceeded to pull out two boxes from off to the side. We'll be determining teams through lots. Is that really the best way? Ida wondered and Izuku spoke up before All Might could answer. It's actually fairly realistic, Ida. Izuku got everyone's attention without meaning to, but continued anyway. In the field pros often have to team up suddenly to deal with villains or disasters, even if they don't know each other or what the other hero's quirk is. I see, you make a good point Midoriya. Ida nodded before turning back to All Might. Please continue, sir, right? All Might sweat dropped. As for conditions of victory, the heroes win if they can touch the weapon or if they can wrap this capture tape around the villains. The villains win by maintaining control of the weapon or using their own capture tape on the heroes. The large blonde man informed as he showed the class the capture tape, do know that this is still a training exercise. If I say the match is over, it is over. Any use of force that could severely injure or potentially kill another student will be an immediate disqualification and a disciplinary write-up. If you get two of those in a single school year it is grounds for removal from the hero course. Three will see you expelled from UA altogether, so follow instructions. With that let's choose teams. All Might held up the first box and called for the first student, Aoyama Yuga, to pick a lot. Izuku carefully kept track of which of his classmates paired up on the teams while he waited for his turn. When he was called he pulled out a lot with the letter on it. Looking around he noticed that Ajui was looking at him with the other a lot in her hand. With a smile he walked over to his partner. Looks like we're partners Ajui. Izuku greeted the frog cork user. Glad to be working with you, Midoriya, and call me Tsu. Ajui, Tsu, requested. Oh, um, alright, Titsu. Izuku stuttered a bit at another girl wanting him to use her first name so soon after meeting. A shortened version of her first name at that. Should we discuss some strategy? Tsu asked and Izuku lightly shook his head to clear his thoughts. 
once we find out who will be up against that would be great. Izuku nodded to the other Verdette. It wasn't long before the teams were made and Izuku looked the groups over quickly. The teams were, Tsu and Izuku as Team A, Todoroki and Shoji as Team B, Yayorozu and Mineta as Team C, Bakugo and Ida as Team D, Aoyama and Ishido as Team E, Rikido and Kota as Team F, Kaminari and Jiro as Team G, Tokoyami and Ochako as Team H, Kami and Hagakure as Team I, and lastly Kurashima and Siro made up Team J. Now for the first battle trial it will be Team D as the villains versus Team A as the heroes. All Might announced as he drew the two teams from two different boxes, one black and the other off-white, of course. Izuku sighed as he glanced over and saw Bakugo grinning maliciously at him with a glare, he seems to have a problem with you. Tsuyu mentioned as she saw the ash blonde glare at her fellow Verdette. Do you two know each other, since we were children? Izuku nodded as the two groups made their way to the building they would use for the trial. Bakugo became a bully after his explosion quirk manifested. It didn't help that he was always rather advanced and was constantly showered with nothing but praise from everyone. He developed the mentality that everyone wasn't as good as him from it all and since my quirk didn't manifest in a visible way, well, I became a target for his ridicule. That's not very heroic. Tsuyu shook her head at the ash blonde's attitude. Not really, huh? Izuku half smiled at her. So we have a couple of minutes to strategize, though since we're up against Bakugo I already have a bit of a plan. Hmm, I guess we should talk about how we're going to enter the building. Tsuyu looked over the blueprint of the multi-story building. I should probably tell you about my quirk too. Mutant type, a frog form quirk, grants you physiology similar to a frog and lets you use the abilities of said amphibians. You can extend your tongue, potentially prehensile, stick to surfaces and you can also leap long distances and probably have very strong kicks. Izuku rattled off and Tsuyu's eyes actually widened at the breakdown of her quirk. Midoriya-chan, how did you know that? Tsuyu questioned her teammate curiously. Sorry. Izuku apologized as he rubbed the back of his head. It's kind of a side ability of my collector quirk. I'm really good at analyzing quirks and figuring them out. Since mutant types are always active it gives me a lot of time to analyze them. With the quirk assessment yesterday I had plenty of opportunities to see your quirk in action too, which helps my analysis. That's impressive. Suyu so smiled at him a cute croak following her words. Oh, I can tell you something else too. Izuku offered. What's that? Suyu so questioned with her head tilted to one side slightly. Izuku thought it made her look cute. Your quirk isn't finished, you can still go further and unlock more abilities. Izuku told her and Tsuyu blinked at him. What? Tsuyu asked for clarification while still being a bit stunned. Your quirk, it can still evolve further. I don't know what abilities you might develop, but your quirk potential hasn't been reached yet. Izuku explained and Tsuyu croaked absently for several seconds. Is this another part of your quirk? Tsuyu inquired, still a bit shocked that her quirk had more room to grow and develop. Yeah. I'm not sure why, but once I analyze a quirk for a bit I can tell if its potential is reached or not. Neither of my parents have very strong quirks overall, both of their quirk potentials are fully realized though. That means neither of them can make their quirks any stronger, even with training, Izuku clarified for the frog girl. So I guess I need to keep training then? Tsuyu asked. Yeah, mutant types grow the fastest when pushed to their physical limits. Transformation types have to push beyond what they're currently capable of with their transformation, sort of like transforming while already transformed, I guess? Emitters have to force their quirk past the point where it naturally kicks back. That's the only way their abilities get stronger though, to overuse the ability until it becomes easy to go past the old limit. Izuku clarified and Tsuyu just nodded in surprise at her teammate's knowledge of quirks. So, we should probably strategize now, we only have a minute left now. Tsuyu pointed out and Izuku apologized for wasting time. It's fine, Midoriya-chan, you said you already had a bit of a plan because of Bakugo, right? Right, well Bakugo is going to come at me full force and almost guaranteed to be alone. So I'll enter from the front to draw his attention. While he's engaging me, most likely ignoring Ida entirely, you could scale the walls outside and locate the weapon, since all we need to do is touch it your tongue should count. Izuku laid out his plan. My tongue can stretch to a maximum of 20 meters and it's pretty fast. Tsuyu nodded as she considered Izuku's plan. 
There are a lot of windows to check though. Should I start on the ground floor and work my way up or start at the top and work downwards? Top to bottom, neither Ida nor Bakugo would leave the weapon on the ground floor. They'd want to keep it far enough away that we'd have to come get it by going up the stairs. Izuku reasoned and Suyu nodded at the logic. Begin. All Might's voice came in through their earbud radios. Stay safe, Midoriya-chan. Suyu nodded to him as she leapt upwards and landed at the third floor. She stuck to the wall and proceeded to climb towards the fifth floor to start checking for the weapon. Izuku exhaled, he'd kept it together well enough while they'd been talking and strategizing, but Suyu's costume was just as skin-tight as Ochako's. So much of her body was defined by the tight material that Izuku needed a few seconds to calm down. Focus Izuku, you need to focus. Izuku took a deep breath and then exhaled before entering the building. It was time to face his former friend turned bully. Walking straight for the stairs, Izuku climbed to the second floor and proceeded to check each of the rooms he passed. As he got to the first corner of the floor Bakugo launched himself around it, a few meters in the air, and let out a vicious snarl. Deku! Bakugo roared as he came down on the verdette with an explosion in hand. Izuku jumped backwards and the ash blonde blasted the wall next to where he'd been standing. Yeah, this is exactly what I thought would happen. Izuku breathed out as he rapidly activated and compiled a few quirks together. Physicality boost, enhance function, durability up, efficiency, kinetic boost, force multiplier. I won't hurt you so bad that they have to stop the exercise, but just under that. Bakugo threatened as he launched himself at Izuku. The verdette's green eyes followed Bakugo's movements and with a mental nod he stepped into Bakugo's guard. Once close enough he grabbed Bakugo's large grenade gauntlet and used a shoulder throw to slam the explosion user into the concrete, back first. Bakugo hacked as the wind was knocked out of him and Izuku shifted his hold from the support item to Bakugo's upper arm. Quirk nullification was used and Izuku, with his quirk-enhanced strength, easily manhandled the struggling Bakugo. Within only 30 seconds of the encounter starting Izuku had subdued and wrapped his capture tape around the red-eyed boy. Bakugo was eliminated. All Might called over the radios and the ash blonde stilled. Izuku let Bakugo go and stood up. The verdette turned from the ash blonde and started walking towards the stairs. If Bakugo was willing to fight on this floor that meant that the weapon wasn't on the second floor at all. Damn it Deku! You coward! Fight me! Bakugo yelled at the back of the retreating teen. Izuku sighed as he turned back to face the enraged blonde. You always start with a big right, Bakugo. Izuku informed the pissed off explosion user. I know that and exploited it to subdue and eliminate you, you cheap fuck. You're just scared to fight me. Bakugo roared at him. Being a hero isn't about beating up villains, Bakugo. Izuku shook his head. It's about protecting the innocent, saving victims, and then subduing villains. You could be such an amazing hero if you had your priorities straight. With his piece said Izuku turned the corner and headed for the stairs. Bakugo, leave the building. You've been eliminated. All Might instructed clearly and Bakugo grit his teeth as he stormed out of the building. Izuku had just gotten to the third floor when he heard Tsuyu over the radio. Midoriya-chan, I found the weapon, it's on the fourth floor, third room from the stairwell. Tsuyu informed him. Great work, can you get it? Izuku inquired as he rushed up the stairs to the fourth floor. It would be easier with a distraction. Tsuyu replied and Izuku grinned. I can be distracting. Izuku informed his partner as he walked towards the third door that Tsuyu had told him was where the bomb was. Since he still had his boosting quirks active Izuku raised his right foot and kicked the door. The enhanced strength granted by his compiled quirks knocked the door clean off its hinges and Ida instantly focused on him. You've done well hero. Ida called out in a very over-the-top evil voice but you will not be stopping my nefarious plans today. You're right, I'm not. Izuku agreed, and even with his helmet on Izuku swore he could see the confusion on his classmate's face. What? Ida questioned confused. She is. Izuku inclined his head behind Ida just as All Might's voice came over the radios. Weapon secured. Heroes win. All Might announced and Ida turned to see Tsuyu's tongue touching the paper mache bomb while the frog girl stuck to the wall outside. She'd only had to open the window while Ida was distracted to complete her part of the plan. New. Ida cried out in shock at his inability to protect the mock weapon. 
That was a great plan, Midoriya chan. Tsuyu smiled at her partner. You did amazingly, Tsu. Izuku smiled back, not even realizing that he hadn't stuttered over the friendly name. Good job, Ida. If Bakugo wasn't so uncooperative, I'm sure you would have done even better. Thank you, Midoriya, but I'm not so sure. Ida replied as the trio walked down the stairs to exit the building. Your plan was ingenious and made great use of both of your quirks. Izuku and Tsuyu accepted the stiff teen's praise and entered the observation room to see All Might and the rest of their classmates. Now let's go over the results. All Might declared as he looked over the class. Who can tell me the MVP of this trial? Sir, I can tell you. Yayorosa raised her hand in the air. With a nod from All Might the Ravenette continued. The MVP of this trial was Midoriya. He quickly determined his opponent's actions and created a plan to take advantage of them. He made excellent use of not only his own quirk but his partner's as well. Instead of engaging Bakugo in a long drawn-out fight, like Bakugo wanted him to, he subdued him quickly and moved to assist his teammate to complete their objective. Correct, Yayorozu, excellent analysis. All Might smiled and Yayorozu bowed slightly with her arms at her sides. That was amazing, Midoriya. Ochako smiled as she congratulated him. You and Tsu both did great, thanks Ochako-chan. Tsuyu smiled at her friend. Midoriya-chan came up with a great strategy. No, no I just knew how Bakugo would react is all. Izuku waved off, flustered by the compliments of the two pretty girls. The next trial pitted Team B as the heroes versus Team I as the villains. Unfortunately it was over rather quickly. Todoroki had frozen the entire building in seconds. This left Kami and Toru frozen to the floor, enabling the ice user to walk into the room unhindered. It was only upon touching the bomb and not hearing All Might announce his victory that he realized something was up, and not going T to BB so easy F fam. Kami chattered out as she wrapped her arms around herself for warmth. My feet! Toru whined as her bare feet had been frozen to the ground. What? Todoroki questioned only to faintly notice that Kami was almost constantly exhaling a shimmering mist that had nothing to do with the frozen room. My quirk is called glamour, it makes illusions. Kami shivered. If you can't find the weapon in the time limit, then we win. It won't take me 15 minutes to search this entire room. Todoroki replied as he started walking around the room with his hands out. Shoji came in after two minutes to help and with his quirk he simply made dozens of arms and covered the room in a few seconds. The illusion bomb was actually in the corner nearest the door when Shoji touched it with one of his arms. Hero team wins. All Might announced and Todoroki quickly thawed the entire building. Ow, 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 my feet. Toru whimpered as she was helped by Kami down the stairs. When they arrived into the observation room Mizuku was already by the door waiting for them. Hagakure-san, are your feet okay? Having them frozen for so long could damage them. Izuka worried over the girl. They're super sore, Midoriya. Toru admitted as Kami helped her sit down on a bench in the room. I can heal them for you if you'll let me. Izuku offered and almost every student perked up at hearing that. You can heal people, Midoriya. Yayorosu questioned with surprise. Healing quirks of any true strength are rare, most can only heal bruises and cuts. You healed my ankle at the entrance exam. I remember. Ochako smiled brightly at him. Yeah, it was one of the first quirks I copied, it's called Healing Aura, and it came from a nurse that helped with my surgery. Izuku explained. Give me a second Hagakure. He smiled at the invisible girl as he held out his hands. Please place your feet on my palms, okay? Toru responded and Izuku felt the weight in his hands a moment later. Here we go. Izuku smiled as he activated two quirks. Healing aura and amplification compiled and the green glow surrounded his hands and then Toru's feet. Oh, that feels funny, Midoriya. Toru stifled a giggle as her feet stopped hurting. It does sometimes. Izuku nodded with a grin at the bubbly invisible girl. Healing aura is good at dealing with cuts and bruises as Yayorosa said, but with a boosting quirk called amplification it can even heal more serious injuries, like the beginnings of frostbite. My feet feel great. Toru cheered a few moments later. Glad to hear it. Izuku beamed at the girl as the green glow faded away. That's amazing. 
Kami breathed out as she watched Toru put her shoes on and then jump off the bench, the invisible girl's shoes and gloves marking where the teen was prancing around the room without hesitation. I'll be happy to heal any injuries that are sustained during the trials if it's okay with you all might. Izuku offered, of course Midoriya, that's a heroic act already. All Might agreed and all of the students quickly started thanking Izuku in mass. Izuku blushed and rubbed the back of his head, flustered by all of the thanks. Hmm, it seems I may have misjudged you Midoriya. All Might thought to himself as he watched the Verdette talk with his classmates. I have a bit too much resentment against him and I almost took it out on you for having a similar quirk. I'm glad to see such a quirk actually used for good, instead of for selfish gain. The rest of the battle trials went off without any real problems. A few minor bruises, which Izuku healed in seconds for the injured, were the worst of the rest of the day. It wasn't until All Might dismissed them to the locker rooms to change back into their uniforms did Izuku overhear the girls' conversation. Ugh, my netasan barely did anything for our trial. Yayorozu complained. He just blatantly ogled me almost the entire time. Freaking pervert. Jiro huffed as she comforted the tall ravenette. That grape is thirsty AF. Kamit scat as she rubbed Momo's back consolingly. My costume doesn't help, I'm sure. Yayorozu lamented as she looked at her revealing costume. It was a leotard that left all of her cleavage exposed along with her stomach and didn't cover her legs at all. Her large belt helped cover her hips and upper thighs, but it showed off quite a lot. But I need skin exposure to use my cork to the fullest. Um, Yayorozu. I could try and help out if it'll help you. Izuku offered and the seven girls turned to look at the green-eyed teen. Thank you for the offer, Midoriya, but wouldn't you need to know the properties of my quirk to be able to suggest costume alterations? Yayorosa asked with curious eyes. Emitter type allows you to alter your lipids into other forms of matter by knowing the molecular structure of the item you wish to make. Creations are made from the body through the skin and are hampered by clothing. Though your lipids are finite and limit the amount of creations you can make your quirk does not solely rely on them. The glow that is emitted from your skin when you are creating is also rapidly converting the gases and other forms of matter nearest to your body into the item you wish to create. Your creation speed is also influenced by how well you know the item in question. Izuku rattled off and all of the girls, even Tsuyu who'd already experienced it, stared at him in shock. How, how could you? Yayorosa trailed off as she started at the verdette in front of her. Wait! She suddenly exclaimed as what he'd said fully registered. What do you mean my creation isn't solely reliant on my lipids? That's how I've always used it. I'm sorry. Izuku panicked, thinking he might have offended the beautiful teen. My quirk has a side ability of making me really good at analyzing other quirks. Since I've had time to analyze how your quirk works at the assessment and now at the battle trials, I was able to figure it out a bit. I'm sorry Midoriya. I was just surprised by how well you seemed to know about my quirk. Yayorosa shook her head and bowed slightly in apology. Could you please explain what you meant about my quirk not relying on just my lipids? Oh, no. I'm sorry if I freaked you out, Yayorosu. Izuku apologized again. With a deep breath Izuku answered Momo's question. Your quirk, creation you called it. It seems to use your lipids only to make the framework of your creations. The multicolored glow that appears next to your body when you create is your quirk altering matter near you to create the rest of whatever item you're making around the converted lipid framework. You wouldn't be able to create cannons that weigh well over 50 kilograms from your lipids alone after all. I, I never, never even thought about. Yayorosu couldn't seem to complete her sentence in her shocked state. But when you just stop to really think about it, it makes so much sense. That was crazy. Mina gasped as she looked between Momo and Izuku. Can you do that with anybody's quirk? If I have time to see it in action and analyze it, then I think so. Izuku nodded. He did it to mine when we were strategizing for the battle trial. Suyu spoke up and all the girls, barring Yayorosu, turned to look at the frog girl. It's actually what we spent most of the time talking about. He also told me my quirk can still grow and advance further. That quickly had all eyes back on Izuku who flushed at the intense looks he was receiving. The stairs were only broken when Yayorosa came out of her silence. Midoriya, thank you. Yayorosa spoke up, apparently over her shock, at least a bit. I never thought to re-examine my own quirk after I first learned about it. 
Back when I was a small child I created for the cork registration office and they examined how my cork worked. I never thought to question it further when I started making larger and heavier items. You've opened my eyes to the true potential of my cork, and for that I want to sincerely thank you. The beautiful Ravenette bowed formally to the Verdette. No, no, Yayorozu, it's fine, you don't have to bow. Izuku panicked a bit. I just have a weird hobby of analyzing quirks is all. It's not weird, it's super useful. Toru spoke up. Can you analyze mine sometime? I'd love to know what else I might be able to do. I wouldn't mind either. Jiro spoke up with a grin. If you can figure out things the person doesn't even know about their own quirk then who knows what some of us have been overlooking. You're amazing, Midoriya. Ochako smiled brightly at him. Totes the best. Kami added with a smile of her own. Feel free to analyze my quirk anytime. Izuku wasn't even sure if Kami meant to, but she sounded very alluring when she'd said that. I'll try and help you all if you want. Izuku agreed with his head down as he tried to fight the red that was on his face. He was super and used to the attention of so many cute girls. Midoriya, if you want to offer suggestions for my costume, I'd welcome them. Yayorosu smiled happily at the teen. Izuku actually thought he saw sparkles around the almost bouncing ravenette. I'll sketch something up for it tonight, Yayorosu. Izuku nodded back with a smile. He then almost ran off to the boys' locker room to change and escape. Ah, he's shy. Kami purred and all of the other girls looked at her. What? It's Toad's cute, and that's a wrap, folks. We hope you enjoyed this thrilling episode of What If Deku Has a Copy Quirk Part 1 on our channel. Stay tuned for the next part where we'll explore the endless possibilities of Deku's copy quirk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, keep exploring the anime universe with us.